Hey everyone, this is Dawn Bueller, your Kansas Riverkeeper, and I'm back today to talk to you about another Calm Minute. And today I'd like to talk to you about a first aid kit to have when you're out on the Kansas River. And um, I'm going to show you some things that uh, I think are important to have in a first aid kit. I have both a personal first aid kit and one for Friends of the Caw when we do our group activities or our educational paddle trips or even our cleanup events. So um, I want to show you what we like to include and then we'd like to hear from you. What do you like to include in your first aid kit? And everyone's going to have lots of different ideas about what's important, but maybe we can learn something from each other. So with that, I'm going to show you um, what I've been working on, getting our first aid kit ready for the season. So as soon as the stay home order is lifted and we're able to congregate in groups, um, we want to be ready to go. So um, I'm outside today. It's beautiful. It's blue sky. It's 70 degrees. It's a perfect spring day in Kansas. And so let's get started. All right. So for starters, I'm going to share with you that um, we created a list of first aid essentials. And this is just a print off of it. But if you go to our, our website, kansasriver.org, and then look under volunteers, and there's a page there called Caw River Guides. Under that page, you'll find um, a list of what we put together for first aid kit essentials. Um, we asked for feedback from our Caw River Guides and um, also took some other reputable sources like REI and some different groups and put together what we thought was um, a list of things that you could potentially put into your first aid kit. So first off, it's really important when you're out on the Kansas River to have a way to keep everything dry. So I use one of these um, water um, kits, um, one of these containers, waterproof containers, and you can get these at Walmart or at different um, higher end stores, but um, a lot of times I just get them through Walmart. And then um, I also have a dry bag here, you'll see that's underneath a bunch of items. So I take this container, this waterproof container, and I put everything in it that I want to take out on the river. And then I put this box in a dry sack and then I put a carabiner on it because, you know, if you ever dump your kayak, you'll know why you don't want this floating down the river. And so then I carabine it and I actually put it inside a storage compartment in my kayak, but I put the carabine on it so that I make sure that um, it's as secure as I can have it be. So these are some items that um, I put in my first aid kit, but I don't put as many as what you see here. This is just my supply at the moment. So I you know, might break it down and put a few of each, but you'll want to make sure you have some gauze pads. I have a couple different sizes that I like to take. I do have some alcohol prep pads. Um, I like to have those for, for cleaning if we have wounds. Be honest with you, a lot of things we have is just somebody needs a Band-Aid and somebody needs some Tylenol, but uh, we like to be prepared if we have to um, help someone out until we can call 911 and have the paramedics arrive. This is a blood stopper. And along the same lines, I have a tourniquet. If you're not familiar with a tourniquet, um, it can be really useful in emergency. So um, I do have a tourniquet that I keep in the bag as well as a pair of scissors that will cut uh, clothing material. Um, I don't anticipate ever having something like that. Excuse me, but that is um, my rooster. So I'll let you all take a look at him. He's uh, pretty proud of himself over there pecking away. Um, so if you hear Mr. Rooster, um, you'll know he's right here beside us. Uh, I also have some scissors. Um, that's for like cutting tape and small things. There he goes. And you want to make sure you have some tweezers um, and some different gauze. There is a CPR protector, I think, um, is something that is recommended, as well as some gloves for protection. I like to carry Tylenol, of course, and some anti-diarrheal. Um, that's a horrible place to be stuck in that situation out on the river. And then I'm a big fan of emergency for when you don't feel good. Um, I do like to make sure I always have Benadryl. This is like one of my most important things because if you're allergic to something or you're having some sort of allergic reaction, this can really um, be a lifesaver and come in handy. Um, I do carry some first aid antibiotic 
make sure I have plenty of tape. And then you can see I have a wide range of, um, of band-aids that I like to carry. So I really like these waterproof tough strips. Um, they come in really handy. So um, I do uh, break this down and just put um, a certain amount into my box. I don't carry them all at the same time. Um, and then a few other things that I thought I'd share is this is my life jacket and please forgive the fact that it is very dirty but it, it does get used a lot. Um, I was just out on the river on Sunday in fact and I wanted to share that you know I do carry um, a case and most of you probably do too um, some way to keep your cell phone dry and I think this is really important. Um, so this is a, is a case that I keep my cell phone in and then I attach it to my life jacket because here's what's important. If you get separated from your boat, and we all know that that's possible, um, you hit a log, something to, um, knocks your boat over and you get separated from it, then you're gonna want to be able to call 911 if you have an emergency. And the only way you're gonna be able to do that is if your phone is on you and not in your kayak. So I make sure that my cell phone is attached to my life jacket because I'm never without my life jacket. So that way I make sure that I have it. Um, hand sanitizer, always, always, always hand sanitizer um, in my life jacket. I also carry some um, hydration tablets um, that you can add to water um, for a really hot day. To be honest, probably one of the things we see the most is that people get overheated. And so we make sure that we have plenty of water, plenty of ways to keep them cool in the um, really hot part of the summer. Um, I. I bring a cold towel and I put it in my cooler that has some ice in it and I put ice in a Ziploc and I keep that towel ice cold and that's for me or anyone else who gets overheated so that we have um, a cool towel. For me if I just put a cool towel around my neck it can help cool me down when it's really hot out. Um, of course you want to make sure you have a hat, sun protection, those kinds of things and we'll have another call minute on gear to bring on the river. But this is really about first aid, but I do have um, a multi-tool that I like to keep on me. I also have a pocket knife that I also keep because there's lots of times when you have to cut fishing line. Um, so that's an important thing to have. And then one of the things that's a rule for Friends of the Caw is that all of our Caw River guides, um, anyone that's with us um, in a capacity to help the public has a whistle. So for us, an emergency is a loud whistle and we use these storm whistles they are so loud. I won't blow it because you guys would um, break your eardrums with it, but it's really loud. You can hear it for a long way on the river and we use these. Um, so if someone dumps their boat, if there's some sort of um, issue on the river, if someone's having a problem, we can blow the whistle and then everyone knows to get to, the, to follow the group and get to a sandbar or to a safe place so that we can assess the situation. So those are just a few things um, that we like to have in our first aid kit. Um, here at Friends of the Caw. I hope that um, we were helpful in some way. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, share in the comments um, what you like to include in your first aid kit, and maybe we can all learn from each other. Happy paddling, and we hope to see you out on the river soon.